So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got yet another great guest. This guest, she's a singer, songwriter, actor, literally does everything. She has starred in Deadpool 2, <laughs> Supernatural, The Good Doctor, Supergirl, and a, an awesome movie coming out on Tubi very, very soon, Corrective Measures. It's a wonderful Hayley Sales. Hayley, welcome to the show, my love. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's really fun to be here. And that it was is a the pleasure best to... pep talk I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. And do you know what? The one thing I like about doing these shows is that I get to discover um, new pieces of work. I get to discover new music. And I've got to say, your music is absolutely amazing. Um, I've been listening to it for the last, like, what, last week? Um, to and from work Aww. and I tell you what it definitely puts you in a better mood uh, but we'll talk about your music uh, in a few moments but before we do I normally check in with my guests because the last two years has been well, a bit of a struggle a bit a bit a bit a bit of a challenge um, and Ooh. what I wanted to know was how the last two years have been for you um, how have you kept positive and how have you kept moving mm -hmm. forward step by step that's a really good question. <laughs> I mean, I don't, it's been, it's been tough. It's definitely been a, a tough couple of years and I got to a very dark place to be fully transparent, I guess. Uh, geez, almost two years ago now. It's been that long. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I, I had had a couple setbacks, lost a record and finally finished one right when COVID happened. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just, I just went super dark and I realized I had a choice to either center myself and visualize the positive and be grateful for the things I do have. Like I get to lay in a bed tonight <laughs> and <laughs> it really mm -hmm. changed things around for me actually. And to be honest, just kind of switching my perspective, it went from quite a few years of just beating my head against a wall to mm -hmm. Sharon Stone wanting to release our song and then getting this incredible role in this incredible movie. And so, or, and, booking a tour with Rufus Wainwright. So it, it proved to me that if I change my outlook and I'm grateful for the little things that it, it shifts things over time. Having said that, it's been a crazy couple of years. <laughs> Do you know what? It has, it has been a crazy couple of years. <laughs> and um, throughout the t last two years, I've learned to be a teacher for my kids because obviously they've been yeah. home for quite, quite a lot of it. And I've got new yeah. admiration for teachers out there. It is difficult. It really is trying to keep <sighs> an eight-year-old and a four-year-old occupied um, and that do online fun. teaching. <laughs> It, well, it was fun for the first couple of weeks and then it, it, it wasn't after that. But you know what? You've got to look on the the, 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 the positive side. I suppose with this pan pandemic, it's definitely shown us the nice people. Um, they've really shone. They really have. Uh, because, you know, you saw humanity. You, sh you, you, you saw the people that actually cared. So true. And also the creativity that has come out of COVID of... You know, mm -hmm. people working on projects, writing songs and yeah. producing uh, great new shows on our screens. So let's mm -hmm. rewind back to your your birth. OK, so um, <laughs> you you was born in Washington, D.C. And Washington, D.C. is one of my favorite places to visit. I absolutely love really? the place. The fact I that all the museums. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All, all the museums are free. You don't have to pay forum mm -hmm. and you've got the yeah. space in here and and you've just got a fantastic but it's so clean and uh, it feels so safe um but yeah, yeah it's a wonderful place and you were brought up literally with a recording studio in your house i mean you must have seen yeah. some sites uh, i mean what was that like to have that influence around you because that must have been crazy i th it was I don't think I realized how incredible it was at the time, clearly, because you're a baby and whatever. But just down to the fact that my mom would pack us on a bus and I'd go to the Smithsonian if I was having a tantrum when I was in diapers. Like, that's pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, my dad, Richard Sales, is this never quite made it legendary musician and producer. And so he had this gorgeous studio in our basement actually in Hyattsville, Maryland, which is right next to DC. And he recorded everyone from Miles Davis to 
of the up and coming R and B and jazz stars at the time. And I just remember he put me on the mixing board and I'd just be like bopping my head, listening mm-hmm. to these epic beats or, or, you know, beautiful jazz songs. And I'm absolutely positive. I would not be who I am or where I am right now without just kind of having it is infused. It's just, you know, mm. you're just around it. It's, it's, you get saturated by it. So I'm very lucky in that way. That Lots of amazing. people around the house I, always. <laughs> mm, yeah, I can, I, yep. I can, ima- I, 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 I can imagine it. And I suppose it's such a great origin story because of where where you are now and what and what what you're doing, which is great. But then you know nothing yeah. really stopped you because from a young age you were doing so much. And please correct me if I'm wrong because I do my research and and as you we all did. know the in, the, in, the internet isn't always true Special. but please correct me if you was wrong so so from a young age yeah. you you studied at northwest academy and you mm-hmm. studied classical and jazz and dance and filmmaking at such a young age was it 11 to 12 i mean is that normal for someone that young <laughs> i i must have come out of the womb determined to be a performer because i uh, i remember when i was a little kid i'd raise my finger before I could talk. And if my older brothers and parents didn't sing, it was a very bad situation. Like I was through t- a tempestuous tantrum. Uh, so I knew very young that I just loved it and I wanted to do it. So my mom, I asked her to put me in theater, very young and dance. And it kind of just progressed from there. And then, yeah, I, I, I was obsessed with Shakespeare. And so that's actually how I got into the Northwest Academy, my my mad obsession with writing sonnets and <laughs> doing Shakespearean plays. I lied about my age when I was 12 because I looked 20 when I was 12. I grew up very fast. And I lied in, uh, about my age and auditioned at this university's performance of Romeo and Juliet and snuck in. And I got cast as Juliet. Wow. I only told them on the opening night I was not, in fact, <laughs> 16. <gasps> They're like, oh my god! <laughs> oh my word! What did Romeo think of that? That must have been kid. absolutely shocking for him. Oh yeah. Well, fortunately, wow. they cast a younger man for Romeo, so he was only I think he was sixteen or seventeen. But still, it was. Uh, I think that, in addition to me writing a book of sonnets and giving it to him, might have been a little overkill. But he was a sweetheart. <laughs> that is that is good to hear and do you know what when you were saying that you must must have come out like just wanting to perform i just had visions of liza minnelli then at a cabaret just <laughs> want, wanting to perform and 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 to uh yeah. sing and dance for for everyone so by the age of 16 you already had um over 100 projects under your your belt as 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 they mm-hmm. say was performing something <laughs> then you've always wanted to pursue Yes. And I, I remember the moment I realized whether it was acting or music or what, just standing on a stage that that's where I wanted to be was my kindergarten talent show. And I was a really shy kid. Uh, and I was hiding behind my mom backstage. And then she's like, go get out there. I'm like, okay. I go out and the lights go on and it was absolute home. I like, I felt so comfortable once I was on stage and I sang, a Linda Ronstadt song from like belt my little heart out and um that was it I was hooked I just there's something about it that just makes me feel at peace which is a pretty oh. lovely thing to feel <laughs> even if just mm-hmm. for 10 minutes Mm-hmm. So when you were when you were, um, you know starting out, I mean, who were your idols? Who who did you look up to or want to be like? Mm, well, I was obsessed with Judy Garland. Loved her, like everything about her, like just passionate vulnerability. I just loved her, the bold romance of everything that she was. Uh, I loved Ray Charles. Really loved Ray Charles. I got you know I it was. I fell in love with everybody, Prince, Prince to Judy Garland. It was anyone that really had boldness, like this mm. gumption, shall I say? When I I really was inspired by them, was especially like Judy Garland, Ella Fitzgerald, the those incredible romantic singers of early classic pop or jazz or or whatever mm. the term is that you want to use. It was I was very much 
I kind of grew up in the 1940s in my head and had a rude awakening around middle school that, wow, I should probably know who the Simpsons are. So <laughs> that was, that was uh, my experience. R- rude awakening, let's say that. <laughs> but that, but that it isn't really a bad thing because for me, I mean, oh. I grew up, my dad was a big 50s and 60s fan. So so I grew up listening awesome. to a lot of, uh, you know, Ricky Nelson and, and, and artists like yeah. that. And, you know, for me, that's when music was music you know when oh, you know you had so the voices real. and the the sound mm-hmm. of the live orchestra or bands and there weren't over processed vocals and and loads it was of, live um, it was music yeah exactly yeah you know? it was a captured performance versus a perfected mm. product i i love it any recording i do mm. i make sure that we do at least 90 percent of it live and then i don't let myself edit which is very hard as a perfectionist but i just think <laughs> there's something special about special about that Mm. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned Ray Charles because I think the last time I went to the Smithsonian, uh, they had the big Ray mm-hmm. Charles exhibition. I don't know, I don't know if it's still there, but they had his <gasps> piano and they had all his costumes <gasps> and, and and everything like like, like that. I, th- I think to be honest, it was just after the film with Jane, J- Jamie Fox, and yeah, um, I, 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 well, I hope it's still there because it should be because it is part of mm-hmm. American history. But for sure, it really is. Oh, it's like um, genius, yeah. So, so your first, so your first performances. You mentioned earlier on in kindergarten. Um, you know, was that the <clears> first time you sang in front of anyone? Mm, no, I kind of would just sing all the time. It was my first time of getting onto a, an actual stage and being alone and singing with an audience that had to listen to me because I would make my brothers sit down and like serenade them for hours every day. I'm sure sure they love that <laughs> it could have been worse first... it could have been worse <laughs> i know it's it's true they were they were very sweet older brothers i love them very much <laughs> yeah i'm that... sure they love listening to you right the right, right, same right now i'm sure uh, they're enjoying everything that you're doing now um you know with with obviously your your performance and you go in and, and and studying at Northwest, you then go on and you book your very first um, you know project, your film, which was a teen horror, which was Sleepover Nightmare. If I'm right in saying, <laughs> you um, did do your research. I do, I do. Do you know? Do you know what? I <laughs> literally try amazing. and find as I'm as most like, obscure facts as possible to try and see yeah. if I do my research right. I mean, you moved to LA for that. I mean, what was LA like? Because you know, I've never been to LA. I've done most most of the East mm-hmm. Coast. Um, you know, Amish country, and I've been to Dallas. I absolutely love Dallas, uh, but I've never never done California and LA. I mean, for someone wanting to make it in the bis- business in the industry, what mm-hmm. was it like moving to LA? I've lived there many times, and I actually have grown to love LA a lot. Like I, I, I it's kind of home base, but. Um, when I was 16, I was not ready to live by myself in LA. Uh, I feel like I was too vulnerable and a little bit impressionable and really driven. And that made a combination of listening to people's advice, maybe a little too much. So one of the pieces of advice that set my life on a different trajectory, which was back towards music, uh, was someone telling me I needed to lose weight. And I developed an eating issue and lost my ability to talk due to due to acid reflux for a whole year i couldn't talk or sing and i had to move back to canada but there's Mm. always a silver lining couldn't talk but i could learn how to use the recording studio so i got really into figuring out how to mix and edit and produce my own songs even if i couldn't sing but Mm. you know la is i think la is an incredible city if you are very comfortable in, in yourself and if and if you just love the dream of what you're doing and mm. you you don't get swept away by all the no's because it's i mean that's just that's any any place or job i suppose but just the deter if you have a determination and an absolute infatuation with what you're doing it's a gorgeous city to live in 
Mm. I mean, LA has always been portrayed as this magical place. You know, the streets are paved yeah. with gold, and obviously <laughs> there are an ug- the, the, well, Some yeah, yeah. I have never been. I, I've, I, I've had friends that have been, and they've said that they've never been so scared in their whole life because they, they broke down once in an area that was, it was like something from um, uh, boys to men. Do you know? Um, Boy, no, boy, 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 boys in the hood, you know, and it was oh like boy. literally really scary for him. But you talk about the ugly side yeah. as well, and and obviously getting the nose, and and obviously being told that you had to lose lose weight. I just think that this industry is very much. Um, you know, sort of materialistic at times, and I've got quite a few yeah, friends that were dan- that were dancers, and quite a few of them oh, actually boy. had e- e- eating disorders. One of my first Thank ever you. girlfriends, she was a dan- dan- dancer, and 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 she was anorexic, and literally, it was su- so such hard to see someone go through that. It really was. It's, uh, I mean, it's so beautiful, and yeah, it's it's. I see. I know a lot of people who have continuing issues and it's so hard having been mm. someone who had it and still had like mentally it never fully goes away even if you recover mm. it's like don't go down that road please you're beautiful <laughs> don't stop it but you're gorgeous the- <laughs> so so i mean what do you do now like to get over those sort of in- insecurities with the business because it you know people are looking at you uh the you know, people judge and they shouldn't do. Um, I mean, how 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 yeah. do you get over that? How how do you deal with that? You know, going forwards. You know, I don't know if I properly was able to deal with it until I lost everything, and mm. uh, I had my whole world kind of pulled out from under me, and it essentially got to a place where every single person I knew had either stopped wanting to help me, or was telling me to quit. You know, you're. Mm. you're even in your early twenties, you're too old. You, you know, like there's so many reasons that that people built up around why I should, why I wasn't good enough or should give up. Once I was at that low low point, and then I just had this moment where I realized I just love being alive, and I really love what I do, and there is no way of giving up for me. So mm. take me or leave me. I'm gonna do the music that I need to do. I'm gonna go to as many auditions as I need to because I love to tell stories and just you kind of, I don't know I guess you just kind of have to really I don't know if it's develop a thick skin because I don't think that works as an artist but you have to really have I've learned to be able to let go faster let it like mm. roll off like a deck you know <laughs> just mm. let the bad mm. roll off and keep moving forward yeah, but, it, but it's, it's obviously hard. made you stronger forward, it really has hasn't it yeah yeah, I, I'm grateful for all the no's because it, it, in some ways it chisels away at all the BS and you just get to mm. really hone in on who you are, what makes you happy to be you and why, why you're doing what you're doing, even when everyone mm. says, maybe you should stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what advice yeah. would you give anyone that's potentially wanting to go down the same route as yourself, you know? Try trying yeah. to make it in show business. I would say, one, fall as deeply in love with your art as possible. Like mad obsession, mad romance for your art, because that is what's going to keep you going, even if it takes 10 years to have your overnight success or 20 years or 30 years. I do truly believe if you genuinely love the art and you believe in it so strongly that eventually you're going to have other people want to be a part of what you're doing. Mm. So it's just don't give up. Try not to mold yourself to what other people want you to be and just let their nose fuel your determination. Cause I think it's, it is, it is hard. And yet if you view the challenges as part of this epic story, <laughs> like, mm. you know, if you were like a movie and you're just in the not great part of it, then it, you just never you see it differently and you you realize that even the the worst the worst thing that can happen tends to lead to a really incredible opportunity you could have never foreseen at least mm-hmm. i've been experiencing that 
Yeah. And 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 they say you get out as much as you put in. So I suppose, you know, if you keep on yeah. trying at it, and as you say, fall in love with the art, uh, you you will mm-hmm. get that back ten ten tenfold. So let's talk about your yeah. voice because you've got quite a unique voice, and it's a beautiful voice. <laughs> and oh, and you. you know, when I listen to singers, um, they've all got a, quite a unique voice. And I wanted to know, you know, when did you find your voice, you know, your style of singing? Uh, because it is quite unique. Mm. And yeah, it, it can be yeah. compared to, to back, you know, to the 20s and 30s where, you know, everything was pure. Uh, I mean, but when did you mm. find your your voice? And if you know what I mean, if that question, Again, question I, makes I sense. I think I might... No, no, it actually entirely does. I have two answers. Uh, as far as how I sing, I must again have come in just with like, thank, thank whoever gave me whatever anatomy I have to have the voice I have. But uh, I just came in with it. And just, I mean, there, my dad actually has recordings of me when I was five or like four or five singing all these Judy Garland and old, uh, you know, musical numbers, just for hours on end, just me and the microphone. And I kind of sound like I do now. <laughs> that like this kind of imperfect vibrato, but I, you know, it, I, I think it was a pretty young discovery and then I lost touch with it because it is unique and the industry definitely did not and still mm. doesn't in some way get it. <laughs> it's mm. like, what are you? You don't sound like the bedroom voice we like. Uh, <laughs> but I think it then took me until probably again i did my first two records with universal and then lost the the third record i think it was then that i really realized and owned my voice like not just the way i was singing but the songs i wanted to sing the allowing myself to just be this messy dramatic you know all heart performer it it took me a long time to get there to Mm -hmm. fully embrace what I might have thought was a flaw before. And how would you but describe no, your you. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 how would you describe your mu- mu- music? I mean, how would you describe mm. it in your own words? I if to make it really to the point might say it's an ode to romance. Uh, okay. it's I view life through a very romantic lens not like fall in love necessarily Mm. but uh that's part of it but just this that you're on this uh story there's a there's a romance to story for me and um i see it that way and so i i'd say that infuses the music a lot it's very classic pop so you get some barbara streisand you get some uh, the Supremes, you get Judy Garland, you know, it's all these things kind of woven together. And I, I'm trying not to limit myself into, or or just allow myself to do one thing because I love a lot of things. And then mm. I'm pulling, pulling them all, all the influences together into this. It's a, it's a modern retro, uh, very much a belter. <laughs> singer <laughs> i don't know it's always so hard that's like that's always the hardest question I'm like i don't know i love to sing from the heart well it's it, you know and what loud. it's absolutely a pleasure to listen to and for all the viewers and listeners if they check out your website which is hayleysales.com and you can get all the details on how you can purchase and buy the cds and and listen to the music and i recommend it to every single person um on your imdb on the trivia you did mention it earlier on and i wanted to explore this a bit sharon stone so i presume we're talking about the same sharon stone uh you know the <laughs> the actress i presume and and yeah. you wrote with her i didn't even realize that she did music or she wrote music if you could tell us a bit about what you did with her because i think it's a astonishing i actually purchased a, a autobiography and i'm yet to read it to be fair because i i haven't had time yeah. but yeah i mean if you could tell us a bit about the project or the working with her because i think that's astonishing she blew me away she's she's one of the smartest people i've ever met and her uh ability to weave words into the story that she's given is so it was it blew me away to be honest i'd never done a co-write and i was 
was very nervous to have her be my first co-write. <laughs> you know, with this when I write when I write songs, I it's I can't I can't force it. I it just it either comes or it doesn't come and and so the idea of sitting in a room with this walking legend and hoping I don't totally screw up was pretty daunting. But I went in and she probably could tell I was sweating bullets and she sat me down and we just talked about everything from the Dalai Lama to boyfriends to just the whole, basically she was putting me at ease. And, mm. uh, and then I remember her asking me, um, okay, you're on stage. There's a spotlight. You have one song. What do you sing? It's your last song. And who are you? And I remember being a bit caught off guard by that uh, at that at that moment, and then sat and thought about it and realized, as I kind of mentioned earlier, it's this unabashed romance, like this just wanting to pour everything out on the stage. And then she smiles and said, um, "Well, maybe we need to write that song then." <laughs> and so we we sat down and we wanted to write a song about that split moment when you're so in love that you almost lose yourself into that experience. And I sat on the piano and, and played and we're, we're coming up on the spot with the melody and everything. And then she would write lyrics. She was sitting there with her notebook and then would come up to the piano and wow. tell me what she came up with and have me sing it. And it was to date one of the most inspiring experiences I've had. She's such a genuine really sweet human and very self-empowered which to me as a young woman was incredibly inspiring at a time when i really needed to see that and be infused with that and are you planning on working with her in the future is she on on your speed dial <laughs> she, <laughs> she's um i think we'll write again yeah i mean it's it's one of those things where clearly she's very very busy but i would love to write with her again we've talked about it so we'll see mm. if if and when the stars align to put us in the same room it's so hard to do a co-write over zoom or mm. I don't know, maybe maybe i'm old school i like to be in the room and have the feeling and you work off each i just work off someone so much better that way so we'll see. And, Fingers crossed. And, There's another sharing co-write. Mm, who knows? And and plus, you're very, very busy. So let's fast forward because literally you're leaving on Monday uh, to go on a European tour with Rufus Wainwright. Um, I've oh, got the poster that. just here. There we go. Ah, Unfollow the rules so tour. I know. <laughs> I know. And, yeah. and I've got to say... Um, I, I read all the dates that you were playing, but you're not playing in the UK. And then I remembered them for a second. We're now officially not part of, the, of Europe, so oh. we're missing out. So. We were just over there. We were there in October. Well, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. Yeah, you've got to come back. So so you're on tour. How exciting is that to actually, you know, oh. um, you know, to get out again after the pandemic, you know, play live music in front of people? How excited are you to visit all these wonderful places? I can't even describe how excited I am. The our our tour of the UK back in October was the first time I'd I'd been given the opportunity to be on stages of that profound level like the palladium and and whatnot i would cry every single show with joy just looking into the audience and seeing people that were listening and wanted to be there and you could i you know you could see their reactions and oh it just felt so good so i am incredibly excited to head to europe and sneak in a lot of sightseeing when i can and then do my favorite thing which is do shows um what do you like about touring the most? Because it must be a great experience. I love the, the the rush of those 30 minutes to an hour that you are on stage, but even more so the moment before you go on stage. There's just, it's this combination of absolute dread. You're gonna totally not remember your songs and this incredible immense amount of excitement to be able to, you know, do what you love which to me is my 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 home is the stage mm -hmm. i love that i love getting to go out and meet people afterwards which i'm really hoping 
the, uh, on the last tour, you weren't allowed to go out as, as the performer. So I'm hoping mm. that the possibility to go out and actually get to sign things and mm. really get FaceTime with, with the humans that are coming to see me. Uh, yeah. And I, I also just love being on the road. Yeah. I, there's some part of me that must just love living out of a suitcase because I've always enjoyed bouncing from city to city and getting to witness new cultures and uh, not know where you're going. Or <laughs> I just I like getting lost in cities. And you're definitely going going to some superb places like Paris, Barcelona, uh, yeah. Copenhagen, and it's gonna it's gonna be exciting. And when you said about obviously going onto stage, do you have any rituals? You know, things that you do just before going onto stage. You know, to maybe calm your nerves or prepare. I'm trying to I'm trying to think. I I like to be alone, and a lot of the time I'll like peek out and and see people and try and just look at everybody's faces just because it calms me down. And then I'll stand with my arms up, just like facing a wall for a minute or two, because something about that posture just opens, it opens me up, even just from an energetic level, it just makes you feel ready to go out and let whatever happens happen, and let everybody <laughs> see it. So I do do that. I do do that before I go on stage most of the time. And um, it would be really I'm funny if people saw me. I'm just like, yeah, just there. Oh, we know what she's doing. She's don't, just meditating yeah, don't or preparing. Me. Don't mind me. I'm just getting ready <laughs> to be vulnerable. <laughs> and I'm and I'm sure you're not a, a diva, but I mean, do you get a chance to um, have a rider of of like sort of your requirements when you get to venues? Um, I, I'm and, and I don't mean like the Mariah Carey standard rider. But I mean, what do you like to have? I'd like a swimming you know, pool with please. you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, you know, when I was a little Canadian starlet as a teen, I got. I know exactly how spoiled you can be with writers, and I I would request everything and nothing and all and get anything I wanted. Um, I've tried to be a little bit more polite this time around. Also, working my way back up from below ground level <laughs> and you get, you'll you can get they'll give you whatever you want but i try to only get what i'm actually gonna enjoy whatever libation my band or i'm actually gonna enjoy that night because otherwise you're just leaving stuff behind and it gets it feels a little diva-ish to me and i have my diva moments but they're much more emotional than writer <laughs> but you can but you can play such a great game you can think of something really obscure <laughs> and just see it's if they're actually true. reading the riders but i tell you what i worked well, like with vegemite uh, and fish <laughs> vegemite like, and what? fish there you go there you go you may not uh, use it but yeah you've got it nope, but I um i i once i once worked with uh, alexander o'neill who's a soul singer mm -hmm. and um, yeah. he had a rider that literally demanded three bottles of whiskey he had five pints of beer and then he demanded a McDonald's and the nearest McDonald's was 40 miles away. And oh. literally he went on stage after drinking a bottle of whiskey and all the beers and, it, and his McDonald's. And I tell you what, he was flawless. And he sung Criticize yeah. and, and all them songs, just amazing. But yeah, sure. I mean, having having some obscure things would be so fun. Okay, but I'll let's work talk that in. Yeah, go on. I'll work that in. Yes, yes, <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything, like a cuddly toy, you name it, you know, whatever. You need to get some freebies out of, of these dolphin. venues. I there need, you go. I need that dolphin picture a, in every A dressing. signed picture of a dolphin. Let's Let's yes. make it challenging you know yes make it challenging yes. let's see if they actually give you a picture of a dolphin and sign it flipper like, wait, you never know sign? okay <laughs> you never know dolphin <laughs> yeah. i will when i get to the next level i'm totally gonna do that and call you <laughs> and then and then and then put it on in, in, instagram and it'll confuse everyone it'd be great um but before we end this lovely interview we've got to talk about corrective measures because this is coming out yeah. on um I, I have been told by uh, Matthew, my previous guest, who's also in the mm -hmm. movie, that apparently it's coming out on the 29th of April um, on Tubi. That's what I so hear. if you could, so That's if you could tell me a bit about, you know, corrective measures and who you play, 
and a bit about the movie. Well, first of all, it's going to be amazing. It was the best experience I've ever had on set. It was so collaborative. And the director, Sean, God, went, like, really the director kind of creates what kind of project it, it's going to be and not just by directing mm. but how it feels on set and he so many times would look over to me and the actors and and be like okay well, what's wrong and i it's i or someone would be like well we want to change this this doesn't feel he would let us improvise he would he really gave us freedom to explore and really I mean, I'm, I can't imagine it not being really special as a film. I mean, with Michael Rooker and Bruce Willis and all the incredible actors that came together for it. It's, as far as the story, it's, you might know, but it's about a supervillain prison. And I play the doctor. They're gen like the doctor that takes care of all these villains. And it was a really fun part because essentially I got to love all these villains and not see them the way that everyone else sees them and kind of be this tiny beacon of love amidst a very crazy uh, comic book, <laughs> you know, a very, very super villain prison. We'll keep it at that. Like, what can I say without giving all the, the plot away? I know, Ev everyone else really is the same. Fun. They can't say much. <sighs> I'm like, that's that, but it's, definitely worth watching and i feel like just being able to have conversations with the the phenomenal actors that i got to have, be in a scene with it not only inspired me but really helped me grow as an actor like it was mm. just you just they're so good that you just are having a conversation and suddenly you're not even thinking about what are what am I supposed to be doing or the little self-conscious voice goes away because you're so intrigued with the person in front of you but it was a uh, really fun really fun experience and 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 you're you talk about it. the cast and and the cast is phenomenal and I've got to say Bruce yeah, Willis for me has always been my childhood hero uh from from watching mm -hmm. Die Hard which is a Christmas movie, and I always have this debate. It's definitely a Christmas <laughs> movie, by far. Can, it, it's it's played that. every year. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome film, and I quite look up to yeah. Bruce because, like myself, I had a stutter and I had speech therapy for like eight years for a, for a stammer. Mm. And Bruce Willis also had a stutter, um, and and look at him now. So any anyone can achieve anything. But did you share any screen sure. time with Bruce? Uh, what was he like? Uh, was 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 he nice? He to... was. He was so nice to me. He was like the sweetest man to me ever. And I had no idea what to expect. I mean, you, you just don't know until you walk into the room. But he he would always come up to me and just talk to me and and then he'd be like, oh, I gotta go do this other scene. And then he'd come back and and when we finally did our our conversation together, I was acting as his you know his doctor and doing it a checkup and, and everything. And I remember between takes, he he was just like, hey, just let's just sit here. And he was so in his story and his character, he would just sit and we just, we kind of had a staring contest and <laughs> then the cameras would start rolling and we'd pick right back up where we left. So I was, in, for someone who doesn't tend to be nervous or starstruck, I have to admit I was, I had the heartbeat going so fast that the sound guy came up and was like, uh -uh, honey, <laughs> you need to chill. But, but the thing then, is, you've you worked know, with Sharon Stone, started... so now it's it's like the norm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, you you just made it and you're like, yeah. No, he was really, really incredible. A really cool guy. I wish him all the best. And and so is Michael Rooker. I had I had more screen time with him, and he just stand between takes and chat we'd just be chatting about everything from modern film to old movies and I, he's lovely i feel very mm. lucky and this was after about two years of just not getting any roles which happens mm. but it just wasn't the time and i remember kind of thinking i mean i love this but if <laughs> maybe i'm delusional here and then suddenly i got i i did that self-tape right after getting my first COVID vaccine. <laughs> so probably that's why, because I was just trying to get it done before I descended into feeling terrible. 
but things things happen for a reason and as you said earlier on in the interview you get loads of no's and uh, but when yeah. you get that yes obviously you get amazing yeses because it's yeah. a, it's an amazing project and hopefully i know yeah. it's exclusive to tubi because it's their first original movie uh, but it'd be great if it gets okay. released you know outside and and it gets a worldwide release because from what yeah. i've read it's it's based on some graphic novels like comics and yeah. um, speaking to dan and Math- matthew there could be a chance that oh, there could be more there could be more mm-hmm. so um so fingers they definitely fingers need crossed. a dr isabel spinoff just saying <laughs> there you go do you know what in 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 the world that we're in now it is possible because there's spin-offs yeah. for everything so I so i just cannot wait so so the important question question is if you can only do something like one of these uh forever would it be singing or acting so if you have to <gasps> oh, choose a- singing or mm-hmm. acting that's it forever which 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 one would it be i would choose performing singing Mm -hmm. because then i could kind of weave it in and i could you know no you're cheating there you're sort of getting around it so so basically musicals i would say say, mm, singing my own song Mm. i would probably i think i'd have to choose music and the only reason I'd say that, because I love film propensely, but I think the, the reason I'd say music is because you have the ability to express yourself. Like it's, it's uh, you create your own content, you create the songs mm. and it's almost harder for me in some ways because it's so exposing that that's that's why I would want to do it because it's a challenge to keep showing up and pouring your heart out on stage and mm. letting people judge you or love you or whatever they want to, you know, mm. think or feel or, uh, and with film, you kind of get to, you can kind of hide behind, well, the editor just did a bad job. You know, like you can, there's a little bit more of a, yeah, just play, play on them. <laughs> but, 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 but I, but I suppose, I suppose film is very stop, start, stop, start. Do you know do you know what I mean? You're getting into character. But then working mm-hmm. in the theatre, for that two hours or three hours that you're on stage doing musicals, you're in that character yeah. for that two, three hours. Oh, and yeah. you're you're you you are that person. So I suppose, you know, mm-hmm. theatre. I mean, ha- have have you got a favorite musical that you would absolutely love to be in? Oh, oh my gosh, I don't even know. There's so many. I I mean everything from for me and my gal to my fair lady to uh oh, there's, <laughs> like there's just so many there's so many to so all of them the rain to move on, just basically all of them with i'm not as into modern musicals i don't know why i don't dislike them i, I love they have a soft spot in my heart too but to do one of the classics to revive one of the classics mm. would be very fun at some mm. point down the road We'll manifest that, make that happen. Mm. I mean, I mean, I was in at college. I was in cabaret, and I absolutely oh, love that musical. Absolutely amazing. So and I played good. Clifford Brad Bradshaw, the American, um, and I really enjoyed it. I really, really did. You and the music did. in that, I think, That's would so cool. really suit your voice. It really, so really good. would. Um, so mm-hmm. obviously, you're going on this okay, we'll tour. Do that one. Uh, Yes, definitely. And you go in on this tour with Rufus and then you come back. What's next for you? Is it a case of just putting your feet up and recovering from the tour? Or have you got things lined li- lined up that you can tease us about? <laughs> I Let's just say I'm most relaxed when I'm really busy. So while I don't okay. know what's happening next, I am excited for whatever takes me to the next place. I don't, I mean there's some tours that we're waiting to confirm so there's a chance that i bop off this tour straight onto another which would be dream uh the life of an artist is so strange because you have no idea what you're doing next ever it's that's actually something i remember sharon saying to me uh is you know even when you're at my level you still never know what happens next maybe that's why we love it because it's it's almost it's terrifying but addicting to be like what Mm. am i going to be doing in a month maybe i'll be in serbia maybe i'll be in canada again maybe i'll be in a movie or maybe i'll be touring and it's so no i don't have anything to tease 
yet. Oh, we'll see. Oh. But you know I what? Know. I will put your I social media links. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put your uh, social me me media links in the description of this video and on the podcast side side of things. But Haley, you've been a great oh, guest. It's been I lovely to have yes, go on. one thing. I go do then. have one yep. thing. I'm releasing my first record in years. I recorded it live, and it's the first one I've been legally allowed to re release. And I'm releasing that in April, so that's something. There we go. There we go. Nothing. So I will make sure I put that link in the video. Um, and I presume that people Thank can you. go and check that out through your website. Um, and yeah. I'll put all your social media links at the bottom for all the fans to They're follow you good. and check out everything that you're doing. And I look forward to corrective measures. And Haley, you've been a great guest. Thank you so much. Look after yourself. Keep Thank safe. You. And stay, stay super yeah. uh, because you're doing such an <laughs> awesome job. And I can't wait to um, go, com, come and see you when you're over in the U UK next, hopefully in the not so far distant future. Yes. Well, thank you. It was so fun to have this conversation. And I'm sure we'll do it again someday.